thank you for clicking through to this video which is number four of 12 videos on why a two-stroke engine may bog down. I've uploaded the full video on the 12 reasons but I've just broken them down and put separate videos on for each cause just to make things a little easier. In this particular video we look at the inlet manifold. Now when it comes to the inlet manifold there are a few issues that can arise. Now to explain my point I shall need to show this side of the carburetor so I'll turn it round. So just turned one quarter of a turn so we can see the side of the carburetor with no fuel tank and no engine. So there we go, the plain old side view and the inlet area or the venturi area is there in the centre where you can see the blue arrows going through representing the airflow going through the carburetor and into the engine. Okay, let's put this into perspective now and add an engine. So there we go, we've got the engine there and at the moment there's no inlet manifold added as of yet but that will be added very shortly but for now let's drag this into the center so we can see things a little better now the inlet manifold sits between the carburetor here and the engine so there it is it's kind of like a spacer between the two and it's generally made of a hardened plastic and on this side there's generally a gasket between it and the carburetor and it's the same story on the other side between it and the engine they then fit together like so and the gaskets each side create the seal and when they are all together like this there's a continuation of the inlet hole that goes right through the carburetor continuing through the gaskets and the inlet manifold and through to the engine and they're all held tightly together with a special long bolt shown here and that continues right through the carburetor itself right through the manifold and it screws into the side of the engine there so it keeps everything fast together. There is an air filter that usually fits on the carburetor this side to obviously filter out the air coming into the carburetor. But I can just explain my point a little easier without showing it there. So as a general explanation then, this is what we've got going under normal working conditions. There's air coming into the carburetor this end, through the air filter of course, and then it enters through the venturi and at this point the fuel is added to the air shown as the red arrow there coming from the fuel jets as it enters the venturi which as I've already mentioned the amount of which can be adjusted by the high and low mixture screws here but when the fuel enters here it mixes with the air and it becomes a fuel air mixture which continues down the rest of the carburetor and through the inlet manifold before coming out into the engine where it's used for combustion. Now one problem that can arise is when this bolt here, the retaining bolt, is loose. Everything's okay at the moment because it's tight. It's holding the carburetor and the manifold onto the engine and it's keeping those two gaskets in the middle there airtight. It's allowing them to be airtight. Now if it's loose, we obviously lose that airtight effect and we get gaps there between the gaskets and those gaps there allow air to be drawn in there where it shouldn't be and of course this will all have a dramatic effect on the air to fuel mixture that reaches the engine itself and all that's happened is that that retaining screw has just come loose slightly so let's just recap what's happening now with the air fuel mixture as usual we've got air entering the carburetor here obviously coming through the air filter it then continues down the carburetor into the inlet area or into the venturi area but at the moment it's still pure air so at this point fuels added to the air and that's a metered amount and it now becomes a fuel air mixture so we've got the fuel air mixture there heading towards the engine and it's just about to go in through the manifold but when it gets to the manifold it's met by this extra air that's being drawn in here at these gaps and because of that there's too much air here in the fuel air mixture now up until this point the fuel air mixture was correct because of the metered amount of fuel going into the air and that was correct for engine combustion but what we've got now is too much air coming into the engine than fuel so it's a weak fuel mixture and adjusting these mixture screws here to add more fuel won't compensate for this problem so because the engine's receiving an air to fuel ratio that's weak in fuel then there won't be enough fuel there to support the amount of combustion for a high revving engine. So this is when bog down is likely to occur. Generally then in this case, if this bolt is loose, then it's just a case of tightening it up. You can actually hold onto the carburetor and try and move it up and down slightly to see if there's any movement as well to see if it's loose. But just get a screwdriver and just make sure these bolts are nice and tight. If they're not, they can always be tightened. 
There are some less common problems like the threads damaged as it goes into the engine but thankfully not too often. Now the next thing I'd check and something often overlooked in terms of bog down are the manifold gaskets. Now let's just say that the retaining bolt there is nice and tight and we've got everything working okay with the carburetor. We've got the correct amount of air and fuel coming through and into the engine. So no problems with everything fixed together there. But what can sometimes happen is this gasket, either this side or the other side of the manifold, can sometimes degrade or become damaged in some way. And despite the fact that everything's fixed together tight, as I've said, if this gasket's damaged, then air can be drawn in once again. And similarly to what we've already seen, as soon as this air starts to be drawn in, it actually messes around again with that fuel-air mixture. And again, we've got too much air to fuel ratio. And when it actually enters the engine, it's that ratio again that causes bog down. Either gasket could fail, by the way, and that could be just down to degradation or it could be physical damage. And we're not really restricted to problems with just the gaskets. The manifolds sometimes themselves can be damaged and draw in air. And of course, the problems of that are the same as what we've already seen. We've got extra air coming in there into the manifold and that's playing around with the delicate ratio of that air fuel mixture. So by the time it gets to the engine, We've got less fuel there in the ratio of air to fuel mixture and of course that causes bog down. And damage to the inlet manifold can be anywhere. So it's a case of just having a really good look around the inlet manifold. If everything else you've checked is okay and you've been through the processes so far, just take a good look at the inlet manifold. You can undo the main screw, the main retaining screw and have a good look at the inlet manifold and it's well worth doing so. So thank you so much for looking at this video and please do check out my next video which relates to the fuel pump diaphragm and bog down. Thank you for watching.